Angie is a rapper, producer, songwriter, husband. I forgot my ring today though. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I just, I'm a lover of music, lover of art, culture. Urban, contemporary, you know, a um, lot, lot of hip hop influence, um, but you know, something your mama could still get down to. My journey with music actually started with me as a producer. So, uh, 2006, seven, I was in high school. Uh, a friend of mine gave me Fruity Loops, cracked coffee. And then uh, we started just messing around and started making you know, beats. Uh, that was around the same time that I started also writing and stuff. And uh, we formed a rap group. And I was a producer, so I was the one who used to make the beats. So I, I, I feel like I started first with the music, with the production and everything, and then you know, the rapping kind of just came out as a result. Possibly because I thought like, you know, I had better rhymes than everyone else in the group. So I got introduced to Abasi um, last year, about, about this time, I think it was actually May, uh, through a friend of mine who's also a producer. And you know, we had this idea of like creating a label because this producer was trying to get me, you know, studio time so I could, you know, do a project. And then Abasi heard me, he was like, yo, this guy's sick, plus he's a producer, plus he's a songwriter, you know, he's just a genius. So I guess he, <laughs> he wanted to, he wanted to, um, we wanted to put together a record label. Unfortunately, some things didn't pull through um, at the time. And so, you know, we strategized and thought about like um, leveraging, you know, corporates um, and their need to connect with a younger audience, you know, millennials. And the artist, like the artist was trying to make music, like how can we bridge the gap and kind of find a way for artists to make money and, and corporates to reach, you know, their brands. And so that's kind of what we're doing with Intap. It's kind of just, you know, giving a voice to artists, but also helping them to make money. It's putting them, uh, in the, like equipping them with the skills that they need to be a brand and be able to, you know, go in front of a board uh, a board of a company and say, this is why you should invest in me because this and this and this. The idea for Tuna Africa came from, um, from Chris. It's like, like, yo guys, um, have you heard any music for Africa, for the World Cup? I'm like, no. It's like, why don't we do something? So I was like, okay, cool. So uh, one Wednesday we sat with a team and we're just trying to brainstorm. Like, we had the idea for like a, quite a while and we just like sat on it because we're like, ah. yeah. then there was already a World Cup song, so we're like, ah. but um, I think we had the right inspiration and you know, we just uh, sat and I, uh, Atemi was just m uh, humming some things and I went on the keyboard right here and just started playing some chords. So we kind of just mumbled through like the structure of the song. Um, then, you know, she did like a quick vocal demo and then um, that night I just typed the lyrics out of my phone and I sent it to everyone in the group and they're like yeah this sounds dope this sounds dope so yeah it, and it kind of just evolved from there we came back uh, she recorded the vocals uh, and at some point the crew was like nah it doesn't really sound good and we, we were just about to like scrap the whole thing and like let's start all over again yeah so um, but I was like, yo, man, now nah, we have to finish it because the song wasn't finished because I, my idea of a World Cup song for Africa, you know, would have like live bass and guitars and we hadn't put that in yet. So I, I managed to help to convince the guys. I managed to convince the guys like, yo, let's finish the track first and see how it sounds when it's done. And the Temi kind of pushed back as well. So, um, yeah, so then we worked on it a bit more. Uh, we brought in some very talented artists. Um, Amani Bayo, who's an amazing percussionist, uh, drummer, and bass guitarist. And then he kind of helped just like put the final glossing on it, you know, and make it sound like really Africa. Mm -hmm. 
I have like a love-hate relationship with social media. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of people who are big for no reason, if that even makes sense. Like, and I feel like the other people who are very talented and are not as, you know, as ex exposed or not as big on social, but I guess that's just how the world works. Um, for me, I'm, I'm just learning slowly about how, you know, how I want to use social media. I'm coming home, Diddy, Dirty Money. Actually, I wish I produced that whole album. It was crazy. Last Train to Paris. Yeah, that was an amazing album. So, um, I guess uh, this is not like the only thing that Untapped is, you know, has been working on. Like we've been trying to get like um, new artists on, and so like this is kind of like the first thing we wanted to put out. But there's tons more music that's coming along the way. Um, the new and unheard of artists that you know I'm sure are going to change the game, like legit, man. So, I mean, I'd like guys to be on the lookout for that as well. Africa.